Chapter 2, section 2.1 is going to be measurements and conversions. We're going to identify types of measurements and units that will be utilized in chemistry, and we're going to identify common conversion factors that you'll have to memorize. So we need to understand what a measurement is and what a unit is. So we have several examples here to follow. The first example is 28, and notice the M is going to be our unit. The unit specifically is meters. Meters is a measurement of length. Other units of length may include centimeters, kilometers, or if you're using the English system, feet, yards, or miles. The second example is 45, and MG stands for milligrams. Milligrams is a unit of measurement for mass. And so other units of measurement for mass may include grams or kilograms. And if you're looking at the English system, then pounds and ounces. Our next example, point zero one two MOL, is a unit known as mole. The mole is a measurement of the amount of a substance. And this unit is going to be used much later in this course. The last example, 7.04 times 10 to the negative 3, capital L, is a unit called liters. And liters is a unit of measurement for volume. Other units for volume include milliliters, cubic centimeters, and if you're in the English system, quarts or pints. So there are two different systems of measurement. There's the English system, and then there's the metric system. In the English system, units of length include mile or feet or yards, whereas in the metric system, units of length may include kilometer, meters, centimeters, millimeters. In the English system, units of volume may include gallons, quarts, or pints, whereas in the metric system, that would be liters, milliliters, centimeters cubed. If you're talking about mass in the English system, we have pounds and ounces, but in the metric system, we're dealing with kilograms, grams, milligrams, etc. So we're going to have to learn how to convert amongst the metric system and amongst the English system, and we're also going to learn how to convert between the two systems. So who's using the metric system? Notice everywhere in red is a country that's using the English system. And so that's not very much of the world. And the United States is one of the largest countries in this mix that is still using the English system while the rest of the world is using the metric system. So if you travel to Canada, you'll notice that their street signs tell you the distance in kilometers or your speed in kilometers per hour. And they charge you for gas by the liter as opposed to by the gallon. In the United States, in Arizona at a time, they attempted to change to the metric system, but have since changed back to the English system. There is a standard system used internationally known as the SI system. So SI stands for Le System International, the units. And so these are the units used internationally or recognized internationally. So these are the fundamental units that you'll be expected to memorize for your test. Length is meter which is M. Mass has an SI unit of kilograms, kg. Time has an SI unit of seconds, lowercase s. Temperature has an SI unit of Kelvin, capital K. The amount of a substance is mole, for short, M-O-L. And volume is liter, which is a capital L. In this course, no number should ever be without any units. So you can't ever put just some random quantity. 28 has to be specified with a unit. That could equal 28 seconds, minutes, hours, pounds, meters, anything. So there should be no naked numbers ever. They should always be accompanied by a unit. This brings us to conversion factors which is what we're going to use in order to change between units. 
Conversion factors are an equality of two measurements, such as one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Notice that both of these quantities represent the exact same amount of time. They're just representing them with different units, one in minutes, one in seconds. Another example might be one foot is equal to 12 inches. Each of these repre represents the exact same amount of length. One foot is the same length as 12 inches. They're just represented by two different units. Another example might be one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, which represents an equality between two different volumes. These represent the same exact amount of volume. So these are conversion factors that you'll be asked to memorize, and you'll notice that there are several conversion factors with an asterisk next to them, like this right here. So let me break down the chart for you. Everything checked off in red is a metric conversion. And everything checked off in blue is an English conversion. But everything with an asterisk next to it is going to be an English to metric conversion. So it's a conversion factor that will allow you to change between the English system and the metric system, which make those very important. So pause the video, copy down the list, Organize them the best way that you need to, and you'll need to know, memorize these for chapters to come. This concludes this section. In our next section, we're going to learn how to actually perform conversions.